Hi guys, my name is Mark Piller. Welcome. In this video, I'll be talking about a new feature which, which we added into Backendless version 5 release. And the feature is called Real-Time Database. Uh, a very exciting system that gives you an ability to create highly interactive and very dynamic mobile and web applications. What is Real-Time Database? If you uh, consider just the most trivial scenario where you have client A and client B, uh, working with the same database for the same application. Client A creates an object and uh, with real-time database that object is automatically delivered to client B. Thus, both clients would always have the latest data at any point of time. Similarly, when objects are modified in a database or deleted, then and one client introduces that change, all other clients automatically get notification. Uh, so that's in the most simplistic sense. The way it worked before is when, when, when the client would create new object, other clients would know about this change simply by making a request. And that approach still works. You can still do it. So the real-time database is completely optional, but I believe many of you would benefit from having that system in place. Whenever you uh, create a real-time database connection, you can express a condition. Uh, where you will say, I'm interested to receive updates for when objects are created, updated or deleted, but only for the objects that satisfy certain conditions. So you can introduce conditional uh, behavior where you say, uh, send me uh, notifications, send me uh, uh, real-time updates only when objects of certain type get updated, created or deleted. A backendless console is automatically tuned into the real-time database. So you could basically open a, a data table in Backendless Console, and then as objects are created, updated, or deleted, Console automatically updates that uh, information in real time. So you could just sit, sit, sit back and then look at how the data in your application is changing. Real-time database system is uh, cr completely cross-platform. And uh, what I mean by that, you could have a client that, let's say, JavaScript uh, saves an object, which is going to be just a JSON object from the JavaScript client perspective. When that object is saved in a database, you could have Android, iOS clients uh, connected to the same database as real-time clients. Backendless will automatically morph that JSON object into Java object for Android clients and into Objective-C or Swift object for the iOS clients. You don't need to do any of that data morphing on your end at all. It is completely handled by backendless bidirectionally between all different types of clients. And then uh, the actual data that is being exchanged can be of different types. Of course, with the database, it is uh, basically objects, but we also have another system that I'll be talking about, which is real-time messaging, and in there, it can be pretty much any data type, but I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Finally, uh, there is an uh, integration with Cloud Code, uh, the business logic for the real-time database. Uh, you could place in the central, uh, centrally executed code, which is basically Cloud Code, logic that would be executed anytime new real-time uh, database connection is established or a client gets disconnected. So you can introduce additional elements of your application additional logic that would react to those events. I'm going to demonstrate a real-time database to you with some examples that I have prepared so you can see how it works and try it out on your own as well because many of the examples are based on the code generation that we included into Backendless. Very exciting stuff. I can't wait to see what kind of apps you're going to build with it and let's dig into the demos and go from there. I have logged into back on this console and uh, created an application for the demo purposes and uh, would love to demonstrate the real-time database capabilities for you. The, uh, there won't, you will not see a whole lot of changes in the uh, user interface because most of the changes related to the real-time database are really inside in the core of the product. Uh, however, uh, what I 
do have here is um, a project that will demonstrate the real-time database capability. So let me first of all run this project. It is uh, an, uh, a, an Android application. So I will just go ahead and run it uh, in an emulator so you can see it on my screen. And uh, here is the emulator. Let me resize it so you can see. And uh, what this emulator, uh, what this application does, it uh, just saved an object in the real-time database and uh, created a listener for the real-time changes. I will review the code in a second. However, here, if you take a look, there is now a test table with an object uh, with a very, very basic schema. In fact, there is a column uh, called foo, and uh, that column contains a value called hello world. Uh, going back to my emulator, uh, this object is now being monitored for any real-time changes. In fact, if I were to modify uh, that property value uh, right here in the UI, and I will say uh, hello RT for real-time, uh, then save this object in the database, we can see that the console automatically updated to hello RT and uh, the object itself also got updated. The next, what I'm going to do, uh, the next step that I'm going to do, is I will update this object directly from console. So as I, as I submit the change right here in console, watch what this uh, label here displays. And I will say, hey, Android. And there you go, so this got updated. The cool thing about this demo is uh, this Android application did not need to make any calls to the database. This real-time update came into the Android application through backend this real-time, and uh, uh, we can see that it is completely bidirectional. If I were to launch additional instances of this app, all of them would be working exactly the same way. To make this a little bit more interesting, I also have uh, an application that is uh, a JavaScript application that does exactly the same thing. So let me open this up in the browser. And uh, here I do have uh, a little application that is a, a JS app that found this object and updated that full property with a string called uh, that says hello world from JS. And uh, now if I were to open the emulator, it also sets hello world from JS. So now let's do this. Uh, we will uh, update that property from this uh, JavaScript application. And let's just say, hey guys, submit. And now you see that this hey guys is now in console, in uh, Android, and uh, of course in this application as well. So now we can actually start additional instances of this JavaScript app and uh, when it runs, it updates it. So uh, let's just say how is it. So we sort of kind of have this chat going between different instances. So I have updated how is it going, and uh, everywhere, including console, it is also updated. So it is completely bidirectional, regardless of the actual client type. It uh, updates this value whether you have JavaScript, Android, iOS. Uh, Hey all update from console. Everyone now has hey all. So as you can see, uh, it works really really well. Uh, and this this is very basic uh, because we're monitoring the changes in just a, uh, in a single object. Uh, but uh, you the API provides you with a way to uh, monitor more complex uh, structures, collections of objects, or the entire tables. The the question, if the question is how can you get this uh, uh, up and running quickly, uh, the answer is right in the download project templates. So when you go here, select Android and download, you will get the Android application that I have here in Android Studio. So you will get exactly the same thing and you will be able to run it uh, right out of the box. It will be tuned in to your back end and you'll be able to run Android app and make the changes between console and the Android application. Uh, the, the, as far as the code, this is all it takes to uh, make the changes, uh, to subscribe to the changes. And as you can see, we have this table, uh, test table data store, which really is uh, the object returned by the backanalyst.data.off.
uh, function that everyone is familiar with. But then there is now this new RT method, and then there is add update listener that uh, received a query. So we're subscribing to the changes for a specific object. And then once this uh, object is created and we subscribe to this query, anytime that object changes, we get that uh, modified, this map will contain modified object uh, that, uh, that we can you know, display the, the changes in the UI. Now, as far as uh, the JavaScript, if you go to pro, uh, project templates and select JavaScript and download this HTML.js, you will get the application that I have here in uh, in my WebStorm, and uh, um, I modified it a little bit so it works with exactly the same object that was created by Android. But out of the box, it creates its own object and listens for its changes. Anyway, uh, it's going to be very very easy for you to. Uh, really replicate this environment that I have created and you just saw in the video. Um, I hope you liked it and uh, uh, there will be, of course, there will be more videos and webinars dedicated to real-time database uh, and if you have any questions please post them here in the comments area for, uh, for this video. Thanks guys, uh, happy coding as always.